Hello trainers, welcome to another episode of Pokemon Go Battle. So today we have our double steel team once again, but not having Togekiss in the back, but having it as a lead. Now having it as a lead gave me a little bit more uh, win situ uh, situations with Swampert and other Pokemon. Sometimes having Togekiss in the back wasn't really the answer, but without a doubt we're going to be jumping into these battles because I want to talk about how having Togekiss as a lead helped quite a bit. So... Um, it was coming to a point where, um, you know, some of the matches with Swamper wasn't really working out too well when I had Metagross as the lead. Um, having him as a switch was a little bit more beneficial when it came to, um, those mirror matchups with Metagross or trying to actually bait out the, the Garchomp in most cases, or sometimes the, the Swamperts too, but usually it was more of the Garchomps and having, um, Metagross as that safe switch can help bait out that Garchomp and then um, not really shielding too much depending on if they're really building up for an Earthquake or a potential Earthquake and then we can actually bring in Togekiss to farm down and then have our uh, Magnazone actually get into like the last part of the set you usually having maybe a shield hopefully but as you can see getting into these battles um, we had Rhyperior as a lead if I'm not mistaken and um, just having to um, have Magnazone in this situation, I just wanted to keep fishing out for mirror shots and trying to get their shields out of the way. And then once that was able to happen, I'm able to then let go of these mirror shots. And I think it takes about maybe three to, to finish it off, but they swap into their Dragonite, which was a pretty good um, idea for a safe switch um, in this situation here. But we switched back into our Togekiss now. He did farm down a little bit of energy. I think he's still going to have enough to have Hurricane. And this should knock out Togekiss. Uh, no, it doesn't. Maybe they undercharged a little bit. Um, just so they can um, build up to their uh, superpower. Or at least a Surf. At least a Surf in this case. I think Surf um, goes first before a superpower. But we just had enough energy to let go of that mirror shot. And we won the match there. You'll get to see, hopefully, in this video, a lot of, um, what is it called? Wins where we were down by an HP. Now, sometimes it felt like Magnazone didn't even have any HP left and we still managed to let go a charge attack for the win. It's been, like, so many crazy situations, but this team did get me to rank 9. I forgot to disclose that. Um... I, I've been just loving this double steel team, honestly. Yes, it's pretty much like a rock, paper, scissor uh, mentality when it comes to gameplay. But with Togekiss as a lead, as I had it from last season, it helps in many situations. And this is perfect having Garchomp as a lead here. So we switch into our Metagross now. Typically, what they'll do is let go a superpower, I think, this quick. Or usually it's a body slam, then a superpower. And at that point, they're just trying to stack up on superpowers if that's what they actually have. In some situations, they would typically shield them towards the very end, or they'll just let it go and let their Garchomp go back in and start farming up on some energy. So in this case, I utilized the first shield, and I didn't utilize the second shield here, um, just so the HP is rather low on uh, Metagross, so Garchomp doesn't have that much energy to farm. It's still very dangerous though for Garchomp to be um, a little bit ahead on energy uh, be just because if we let go of this uh, Togekiss, actually so in, in many cases I haven't actually seen Fire Blast um, initiated with, with Garchomp in, in, in the move sets. Typically they will let go one or two Sand Tomb sometimes or do a Sand Tomb Outrage before they switch into their Pokemon. In this case they went into their Metagross and I quickly tried to switch into Magnuson. Now this is perfect that they let go an Earthquake. This depletes most of their energy and gives us more of an opportunity to stack um, Wild Charges here. Most cases they don't sw um, shield their first Wild Charge but um, at this range here with their health, they're already uh, pretty much KO'd and as you just seen it just happened with the second uh, shot. 
and we're just gonna chip away here at this point with mirror shots because there's not really much that we can do and that was good that their attack went down really at this point uh, at this HP with Togekiss even uh, Sandtomb and an Outrage doesn't knock out Togekiss which is awesome especially in this situation that their attack has went uh, was debuffed a little bit so we're just chipping away here um, just knocking out this Garchomp but this is pretty much a GG's for us I came to learn that with this team it's super, super important to um, to win switch advantage, unless it's a Garchomp um, switch, and they have uh, an earthquake to let go of our Metagross. Because our idea is to um, then bring Togekiss back in, farm up as much energy as we can. So if they have a Metagross or something else in the back that would counter to a Togekiss, we would have that energy to bait their shields, so Magnezone can still come in. And just play catch up a little bit um, with energy so interesting enough with this situation i've came to learn that togekiss leads uh would typically have a guard chomp in the back it's almost almost guaranteed that there's a guard chomp in the back so what i typically been doing at least with this play style with the team is to charge up to an ancient power and hopefully i get some cmp tie uh, if they do end up wanting to let go of their ancient power just so we can let it go most cases they would shield and then I would want to bring in my Metagross as a safe switch to um, get that ancient power damage on Metagross so it leaves Togekiss um, having its health so we can bait out this Garchomp like as you can see here Outrage still doesn't do that damage but we still have enough health just to knock it out and it brings us back into switch advantage really easily so it's okay for us for their Togekiss to come in because Metagross or Magnezone comes in and we're just pretty much ready to go. So here what I'm doing is making sure I'm counting before they get to an Earthquake. Um, in this situation, because we had some extra energy farmed from Togekiss, we can double up on um, Wild Charges. And we do have our shield here so we can easily shield and not worry about the Earthquake. Um, I know... Uh, What's it called? Meteor Mash is not going to knock us out even when we have the first debuff with the Wild Charge. So it puts us in a very good situation. Um, when I was playing with Togekiss, typically I would just ride it out where um, we just let both our Togekisses go. Uh, but I've been learning more and more that is just not a smart gameplay um, strategy because typically we had nothing to answer with Garchomp in the back. We would have to face it off with Melmet or Metagross and still not something that's really really good so here we go again fishing out the garchomp and uh, most cases here it's going to be an earthquake and we're just going to let it go even though metagross is still very strong we have so much energy here that we can farm just from garchomp that it gives us in a better standing position with switch and having shield advantage so they went with earthquake here because i believe it's the harder hitting move against togekiss and we just have to wait and see what they have next so they have a swamp right here which is still not very good we're still up with two shields and we might uh we might as well go with one shield just to take care of this swamper and they bring in their metagross so this is still perfect for us because we want to win this match with metagross um through uh shadow magnezone so what I'm going to do here is just shield the first one, which was an earthquake. Perfect again because they dumped all their energy on that shield. And it just leaves me an opportunity to double up on wild charges here. So what I'm going to do is um, shield here. And I'm just going to mirror shot basically. And it's going to force them to um, shield and to let go of their energy with um, Magnezone here. So this is going to most likely knock us out as far as I know. And I'm pretty sure that they depleted all of their energy. And it just leaves us just enough for an ancient power. I believe they were super close to a hydro cannon there. So we just made it. I think at that range we do um, get knocked out with hydro cannon. So um was was a little too quick maybe on the on the switch there, but for the most part we did win the match and um we can move on to the next set, so for the next battle. So here we go, another Togekiss lead. Like I said, what I was trying to do is make sure I can get to the Ancient Power first. 
their CP is higher, so this may not work out for us. Um, in this case, we do have to shield. For some reason, we were desynced a little bit because we're a little bit lower on health. But we're going to let go of this Ancient Power. I think in one of these battles, they don't shield, but we're going to switch and they bring in their Snorlax, which is perfectly okay. Um, this leaves me to, to wonder maybe if they have a Machamp in the back, maybe a Swampert or a Dragon Knight. It'd be something that is possibly weak to Metagross. So we're just going to hold up that Body Slam and this may be a superpower here. Nope, it's a Body Slam. So they're just chipping away with damage. What I was trying to do is double up on uh, Meteor Mash, but I feel like they would get to a superpower or a um, Ancient uh, or superpower or a uh, Body Slam. And as you can see, I'm trying to switch back into Ooh, actually, I switched into Magnezone, so I wasn't expecting a Garchomp in the back, actually, in this case. So this is going to be interesting. I'm going to probably most likely just chip away. They're just going to most likely farm down on energy. In this case, I always wonder, like, should I use Flash Cannon on our best buddy, Magnezone? But for the most part, I usually just uh, like going with Mirror Shot. So they do end up, um, what is it called, using Sand Tomb to knock us out. And this range, a Outrage should knock us out, but they Sand Tomb. And at this point, we're just one, two, uh, what is it called? Bullet Punches away. And we just fast uh, moved it down. So that was super close. We did have a um, Meteor Mash there, which I was surprised I didn't end up using it. I didn't pay attention if there was actually a shield. Maybe that was the reason why. But... Anyways, we won that match, another close match. We're moving on to the next battle. So this is not good for us, so I try to immediately switch into Ma uh, Metagross. I don't typically like matching up with a uh, Magnezone Mirror Match just for the sake that they can have a fighting Pokemon in the back. Um, we had a little bit of lag there, and that wasn't good. In some cases, depending on how they play it out, I may just go with a straight Earthquake, or I may just double up on... Uh, the meteor mash is there if they let go of a wild charge quickly that's when i go with the meteor mash just to get the bait or i'm sorry just to get the shields so they switch into their swamper this is not looking good for us i'm not sure so i let go um that hydro cannon i'm going to let go of this meteor mash to chip away with damage because i want that toga kiss to come back in and i just need to get rid of this Swamper because it's going to give headaches to Magnezone. So Hydro Cannon goes through. We're at least a shield ahead, which is okay. It's chipping away damage, so it leaves with um, a little bit of health for Magnezone to um, let go of their energy, which is great. I thought they were going to actually farm down. I don't know why they were so quick to Mirror Shot. So this is a little tricky still. I'm going with the Wild Charge here. I want to knock out this Magnezone, it's going to force them to use a wild charge. So this gives me the opportunity to shield and to farm down energy. But they actually got to another wild charge and I was like, darn, this is not good whatsoever. So trying to switch out and we managed to fast farm down and we didn't have enough energy or health just for that Dragonite in the back. So. That was super close. I was really pushing the limit there. Um, we did get a 4 and 1 for that set, which is awesome. And uh, I think I was probably talking to someone there. So yeah, um, this team is still, you know, it's just fun to use. You just got to pay attention to some of the quirks and the, you know, the, the leads that you have to pay attention to. Knowing that our goal is to get that Garchomp in front as soon as possible so Togekiss can handle it. Even if it means letting go our Metagross so we can take care of that Garchomp. I just know that there's just so many situations that we don't take care of that Garchomp and we just um, lose the, the battle very quickly. So moving on to our next set. We are going to go with a Mamoswine. So this is a little bit of a tricky situation because we're weak against Mamos Mamoswine. Um, they're super effective against uh, our whole lineup. It is fragile, which is a good thing. 
I was trying to switch into Metagross um, to catch that um, Avalanche, but in this case, um, it was perfect because the Garchomp just came through. So most of the health of Mamoswine is um, pretty low, which is great. They let go of this um, attack with Garchomp, which is good. And in this case, I actually ended up shielding because I feel like I have the opportunity to farm down in this case and just start pressuring their, um, ooh, I was going to say their uh, Mamoswine, but in this case, it is their Metagross. So, um, it's not looking too good for us because we have to have all shields down so we can manage to have Magnezone play it out just a little bit. The whole idea is to... Um, I'm very surprised I switched into... Okay, so I think... <laughs> I'm very surprised I switched into my Magnezone, but for them to switch into their uh, Mammoth Swine was very interesting. And they ended up shielding, and just because we had all that energy built up, we were very surprised and reluctant to actually knock out Mammoth Swine. And it gives us, gives us the opportunity to actually have their Metagross let go in Earthquake. So because of that, our Metagross was able to come in and farm and knock it out and for us to actually win that match. So in this case, we actually should have lost. Oh, actually, we actually had enough energy for a Meteor Mash. Okay, I'm actually going a little too quick here, but we have enough energy for an Ancient Power to knock it out. But basically, um, for them to do the switch, had the, um, they lost their uh, gameplay there. So. I don't think it was really the best situation for them to actually switch into their Mammoth Swine. They should have just um, played it out and Earthquaked our um, Pokemon and that would probably give them a better chance of, of a win. But without a doubt, we got super lucky with that match. We are able to come around and win it with Togekiss against a Metagross. But uh, let's see what happens with this set here. So again, I get, uh, another Togekiss lead. We're just going to do the same. Um, situation we're gonna go to a uh, ancient power first and then we're gonna let it go and switch so in this case they have a higher CP so most likely they have the better attack stat because ours is a 14 and um, we're gonna let go of this ancient power and we're going to switch into our Metagross so it gives us a little bit of energy to um, start with um, what's it called with Garchomp I know this is a sand tomb because um, on a clear match between the two, we won't get to our meteor mesh first if they let go of their charge move. So we let go of the sand tomb and we're going to most likely let go our uh, second sand tomb here. And we're just going to go back with our... No, I think we're going to go with uh, Magnezone here actually. This is going to force them to f show their last Pokemon that they have. It gives us a chance to farm down a little bit. And it's a Snorlax. So in this case, we're going to double up, I think. No, we're just going to go with the Wild Charge and we're going to dip. This is what we're going to do. I'm a little too scared with their um, superpower that would go through. This is going to force them to Body Slam and let go. And this is going to give us an opportunity to double up, hopefully. Um, we're going to Shield here just to be safe. And it was a superpower. And they switch into their Togekiss and we're going to go with a mirror shot and not play around. They have to use their shield and we're gonna see how they're gonna use it and they're gonna leave it with their Snorlax. So we go through one mirror shot here. I think they have a body slam ready. No, they don't. And we managed to let go of this second mirror shot and win the match. So that was super close again, um, just dodging that superpower. But without a doubt, that was a pretty good match there. So moving on to the next battle. Like I said, this is um, a very interesting, interesting um, set of matches that we've gone through. So Magnezone lead, not good whatsoever. I jump immediately into Magnezone. We know they're gonna probably go wild charge and dip. In most cases, that's what they wanna do. So I'm just letting them go to their wild charge, going to actually shield just to maintain that health. And I'm going to let go of a Meteor Mash. This is going to most likely force them to shield, which that was a glitch right there. They did. And I think I did shield here in this case. I actually want to maintain health with Metagross. So their Storlax comes in. I made a stupid mistake and actually went with Earthquake. We should have gone with Meteor Mash. And um, it 
it leaves us to needing to charge up to another meteor mash really slow in this case so the actually superpower here not good for us and we switch into our magna zone and we were hoping that we can sneak in a mirror shot before they get to a superpower but um they were debuffed so i knew that wasn't going to hurt us pretty bad so i let go of this mirror shot to farm down i actually didn't want to let go of that mirror shot so i just uh undercharged there and we have a dragonite so i was trying to see if i can double up between a mirror shot and a wild charge if i went with a wild charge then a mirror shot um well we didn't get to the wild charge but sadly if we went to a wild charge first um i was hoping that they might have shields but in this case uh we're not going to win this match because Togekiss is just going to simply lose. I think with this match, they went with the mirror shot first. Um, just because um, they probably want to get to a wild charge to knock us out. So they mirror shot to wild charge. I was wondering, like, they could have just knocked us out, you know? Just wild charge and farm us down. But they were probably just scared with the uh, attack that we possibly could have had. But who knows? So I could have played that out a little bit better. But it's all right. Can't win them all. So Dragonite lead is perfect for us. They usually switch. I was anticipating the switch and they did. So they had a Gyarados. So we bring in our Magnazone here. In this case, I usually should shield. It's very tough because the Waterfall and Aqua Tails um, almost knocks us out. So what I typically like to do is double up on my attacks. We do get the shield, which is great. We go with the mirror shot here and they don't go for it and we snuck in the spark to knock it out we were super lucky to win that switch advantage there so we bring back our togekiss and they're most likely going to hurricane us here and i'm just going to let it go because um ah, it's draker meteor um what is it called because uh we want our shields with our metagross that we may possibly have in the back but it's a togekiss we got the boost for chipping away so much damage there and we get to another uh ancient power and i think this is where we get the boost again we got double boost we almost knocked out their togekiss with our double boost of togekiss it was so funny but metagross metagross in the back with two shields we definitely won that match that was really really fun there moving on to the next battle we have a Machamp, a Shadow Machamp lead. So this could be very bad for us, but they end up switching into their Togekiss. So we get into our Metagross and they surrender. So um, they were probably thinking we're going to farm down, shield, have enough for a double attack on a Machamp there. They probably had a Gyarados in the back. I mean, that was a really, really quick surrender or even a um, Dragonite. Who knows? So that was perfect. I'm just going to uh, continue this video here. So moving on to the next battle. I think this is the set that gets us to rank nine. So we have a Snorlax lead. We don't typically get Snorlax leads, but in this case, I don't want to switch out to either Pokemon, uh, the Met Magnezone or Metagross because it can, I guess it can stir, I mean, I guess we can switch into our Metagross, but um, knowing that as long as we shield, we can have that advantage and I'm hoping maybe we can get the boost because it would help us a little bit. But um, if we lose the match, it's all right. Um, in this case, um, I just want to be sure that we're not losing out on switch advantage just in case whatever they have in the back. So I let go of this body slam. I believe we get to another ancient power just before um, we die here. And they let Snorlax go. So Metagross comes in. They have one bullet punch through. We're going to see, I think we're going to just go with the mirror match. Yep. Typically, most trainers stay in the mirror matches. And my idea really is to um, just keep farming energy. So they let go of an earthquake, which is perfect for us. And they have a 
what is it called? A Garchomp. So this is not looking good for us. So now we have to fight as quickly as we can to let go of this Garchomp. But just have enough where Magnezone could come in and farm energy and have enough to actually have a, uh, what is it called? A wild charge to knock it out. So we are not, well, they probably had an outrage earthquake Garchomp. I just didn't want to risk it, honestly. So in this case, we had enough energy for a wild charge. I think I kind of play it out a little bit. I'm trying to figure out where's the sweet spot where we can one shot uh, Metagross where we don't lose that on the earthquake. And I believe it's around that 70 ish uh, HP. You'll see, I don't know if it's going to be in this battles or this set where we kind of miss it out on one HP. And I think it costs us the game, if I'm not mistaken. So I kind of have to play devil's advocate and make sure that their Metagross actually doesn't have enough energy to an earthquake to knock us out. But for us to have enough chip damage with our fast move so we can actually let go of that wild charge and knock out Metagross. It's really, really dodgy, but it, it, it works in most cases if I play it out correctly. So again, another token kiss lead. We're going to, um, they actually don't shield here. So we do switch and we um, not shield as well. And this gives us the opportunity to farm and they have a Machamp. So from one of our previous battles, we've come to learn that a Machamp lead can have close combat, but usually as a safe switch, they would have a cross chop so um, with us we're just trying to just knock out this um, Machamp which doesn't work we're gonna most likely bring in our Togekiss and I think we're going to at least shield so we can win switch switch advantage um, just to see what they have in the back because their Togekiss is is out right like just right there and we're going to see that they actually have a Garchomp so this is very interesting you have to pay attention. We, even though we have this little health, we still managed to knock out this Garchomp. We do get the shield. Um, I believe we shield here. I want to maintain health with this Togekiss. This is really our only solution that we have. So I time it out where we switch into our Magnezone. They Sand Tomb. And they have to let go another Sand Tomb to win this match. Because if they don't... We just have um, a mirror shot ready to go and knock out this Garchomp. So just with that little bit of um, health left, we managed to knock out that Garchomp. That was a perfect match. I loved how that worked out. Uh, moving on to the next battle. Battle to rank nine. So here we go. Here we go. We have a Metagross lead, so it's not good for us. We try to switch as fast as we can. So they get two um bullet punches in and they switch into their guard chop so again usually what i do is i don't shield especially if they um shields you want to maintain shield advantage for our magnezone when we come up with the metagross so they sand tomb here we don't shield and now this is going to really force them to either shield or um let go of their guard chop so they let go of that uh meteor mash and we just simply let go. Oh no, we actually shield here. Wow, okay. I switched it up a little bit. Switch it on my own rules. So the Snorlax actually comes in and then we let go of a Meteor Mash. That's crazy. So what I do here is probably go with our Togekiss, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, and I'm anticipating that Metagross to come in. And now we're locked into the Metagross and we just charge up as much as we can. So what we're gonna do here, they let go of the Earthquake, we shield, it's perfect. We know that they're back fresh with zero energy and I'm just farming up as much as I can before that Earthquake and we let go of that Wild Charge. So that leaves us with another Wild Charge with the Snorlax and it gives a little bit of time for Togekiss to farm down if we need to. But in this case here, I believe we just get, no, we don't. Um, if this is a superpower, they knock us out and it's just a body slam and I believe we just get enough to a mirror shot but they surrender there so GG's there for that match. So I guess that was the exception to the rule. Maybe I was just anticipating that I could get to a meteor mash and either potentially 
um, create some t chip damage or um, force them to use their last shield. So that was a little bit crazy there for that uh, game, but it worked out. So we get to another Togekiss lead. So in this case, they're um, just up by a couple points with their CP. I believe maybe it's a defense. So hopefully our attack is better. Yep. So we get to the ancient power first. They don't shield and then we switch into our Metagross. We know for sure this is an ancient power. There's no need to shield. So they switch into their Dragonite. So this is actually a pretty good matchup for us. At least in this situation. Um, no matter what, forcing a Dragonite, a Garchomp. This is perfect for our Togekiss just to create that chip damage there. We, we initiate a little bit of lag. And I think we, yep, we do shield. I was anticipating, I guess, maybe a Hurricane. Um, but we go with the Meteor Mash here. This is going to force them with that last shield. And I think in this case, I switch back into a Togekiss. This is most likely a Dragon Claw, which is perfect for us. And we get the, <laughs> we get the Metagross. So this is perfect, perfect for us. We had the shield. We had the energy advantage one way, shape or form because they're letting go of their Meteor Mash. And we get to knock out their Metagross with our Earthquake. And this gives us the opportunity for our Magnazone to come in and just finish the rest of the match. There's nothing here besides a Draker Meteor. We we may, we may not see in this um, video here, but um, we get to uh, knock out the <laughs> Dragonite and win the match. So that was GG's there for that match. And moving on to the next battle. Getting right to the end here, guys gonna be a long video but just to rank nine I just want to showcase this team really really well um try to show as many matches as possible so metagross lead here we switch lead, go into our metagross we know they have two bullet punches and they switch into a gyarados so in this case um we can probably play it out where we can not shield and either have our magnezone come in and chip away with damage or have our togekiss come back in i think in this case, um, we force maybe a shield. Uh, let's, let's see how it goes. It's not really too good for us, but... Um, yep, I think we're going to bring in our Magnazone, if, if I recall. We're not going to shield because Aqua Tail at this point is not going to be bad for us. We're going to be chipping away. We're far ahead with energy. They bring in their Dragonite, which is okay. We're going to bring up to a Wild Charge. We have to shield here. Magnazone's really going to be our answer for this match. We're going to let go of this Wild Charge. And we're going to bait out or switch out to um, Togekiss, which is perfectly okay. The smart thing that they should do is farm down, but they're going to let go of this Meteor Mash. Oh, okay, I know this match. Okay, so what my plan, my crazy, crazy plan was to let go a flamethrower, force him to shield, and then have Magnazone come in a wild charge. But we couldn't get to the flamethrower, and I needed to um, fake him out with this mirror shot, which they don't um, do. And then we let go of this wild charge, and then we didn't, we didn't really have enough uh, health left to, to knock out this um, Dragonite and. Magnezone, or I'm sorry, Metagross. Though, what I could have done was actually go to the Wild Charge and then farm down and win the match. So, a lot of things could have happened there where I could have won that battle, but it didn't work out for me. I baited where, uh, you know, probably got a little anxious and tried to outsmart the opponent, but they outsmarted me. But it's perfectly okay. I think this is where we get to rank 9, 25, 0, 3. So that was um, pretty, pretty good for us. So um, I did play it out a little bit more afterwards with that team. I did actually get one and four and uh, maybe a two and three. And then I went back to a three and two or four and one. So I'm still very close to that 2,500. But without a doubt, um, 
Hopefully you liked that video showcasing more of this double steel team. I'm going to plan on playing with this team a little bit more until I feel like there's no answer to um, the trainers that I get into when I get to the higher elos, if I get to that point. But without a doubt, guys, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe this video. Um, streaming most nights if I can on Twitch. It's Pogo Doms if, um, if you don't know. But without a doubt, guys, hopefully I see you on Twitch and um, have fun playing Pokemon Go. Until next time, see you guys later. Take care.